Hey everybody, Adam Savage, and I am in the Object Conservation Department of the Met, and I'm talking to Jacob here. Hello, sir. Hey, nice thanks, to meet you. Thanks for joining me today. We are talking specifically about how this department mounts jewelry, which presents its own unique challenges, if I understand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so tell me about this piece here. This is a German watch from 1670. From 1670? 1670. 1670. With all of this crazy dimensional enamel, and are these actual rubies? Yes, the cover oh. has 47 rubies on it, oh and it's known as the ruby watch. Is the watch mechanism still extant inside? It is. Wow. It has a single hand. God. A single hand? A single hand. So it was sort of almost a military time because I only see 12 numbers right yeah I'm not sure I've never seen it running okay um, so I don't know exactly how it works but you can see the back oh my goodness it's <gasps> gilded brass there's the maker's name oh my gosh look at these floral cages for mm. holding the parts jeez and crow it's still hard for me to wrap my head around folks having this level of precision three or 400 years ago. I agree. I think about that all the time <laughs> really? when I'm handling these objects, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it must, it, I, I've been saying this to all of the folks in your department, but it, it gives you, you get a sense of who the, the people, the person, the shop that made this, don't you? Yeah, uh, you do. And I, I especially love working with objects that were meant to be held in the hand because you get a sense of its intended purpose and it's, right. it has a very specific weight to it um, and a wonderfully curved back. Oh my goodness. Is this enamel? This is enamel, yes. Do know that they're not sure who the um, maker of the case is, ah. but they do know the maker of the movement. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, so what kind of challenges does a piece like this present to you in display? Small objects are difficult because there's not a lot of places to hide them out. You know, if you have a large object, there might be hidden corners that you could put something, but... A lot of surface area to draw your eye. Yeah, this, you know, given that it's a convex surface yeah. and it's completely smooth and monochromatic on the back, it's challenging. <laughs> so, fair, fair. Um, the, they wanted to highlight the case mm -hmm. for this uh, exhibition. For so this not map. the movement. Not necessarily the movement, but they wanted to hold the cover of the watch open so that you could tell it was a watch. Right, You right. could crane your neck and see that there were numbers in, in a hand. Um, so I came up with this solution, which um, it holds the bottom edge <gasps> Of oh my the watch. Gosh, look at that. It slots right into that in. little space. And then this gray arm just holds the lid of the watch open. Amazing. Yeah. I was in my head picturing that the case would be much more open, but you're right. This is featuring the case. It's featuring the case, the enamel work, and, and this, the gemstones. And so yeah. the, the actual movement is a fact, but not part of the aesthetics that you're highlighting. Exactly. Yep. And to keep it uh, safe, because it is small and there's not a lot to grab onto, I have to have this mechanical attachment here. A keeper. To, a keeper to hold, oh. to hold it in place. Another very small screw. Is this a moment that gets old when you finally put a fully painted mount together with the object and no, it sort of disappears? It never gets old. It never gets <laughs> it old. It never gets old. Good. I'm glad to hear that because <laughs> I'm having so much fun seeing all these different objects. And oh it's, my gosh. you know, again, it's not exact. It was a very hard mm -hmm. color to match the blue. Um, but it, it does the job of kind of helping it fade away. Mm -hmm. um, and given that this is displayed on a wall, it's not visible really to begin with. Right, you get, this helps distract you from the top piece and you've got nothing on the sides that really looks like it's floating. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. And th this would be mounted in a vitrine or on a wall? Uh, on a wall with like a vitrine over the top of it, yeah. Can we see how it, sure. yeah, how it mounts onto the wall? Sure, I'm just going to slide this in. All right. Like and this. this is your just giant piece of plastic for mounting and testing mounts. That's correct, yep. So we'll test everything out here before we get to the galleries and then we know what we've made will work. Yeah. So, yeah. How many times will you meet with the, uh, uh, the curators and conservators about your mount before it's finally bought off on? Uh, they will, right at the beginning of the process, we meet with everybody involved, the right. designers and the curators. Yeah. 
um, and if we need the conservators. Um, but after that initial meeting, unless we have follow-up questions, we're on our own to design the mount and um, execute it. And then wow. they get to see the finished product in the galleries the day of installation. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Um, I'm really blown away by the um, petal work on these flowers. The, the It looks like it was painted with the tiniest brush I can imagine. Yeah. Jacob, this is such a lovely mount. Thank you so much for walking me through it. Of course. All right, we're looking at some mounted jewelry. Warren, tell me tell me what this piece is. It looks like it goes on a hand. Yep, it's a bracelet with rings. Um, it's a form that it's, I think it's called a, a hatful, um, of meaning hand flower. And it ah. goes back, this type of jewelry goes back to uh, seven or eighth century BC. What? So I was impressed to learn that myself. <laughs> um, and this piece has 109 rubies, I think 37 emeralds or something. Oh my a lot God. of white sapphire. So um, it's from Mughal, India, uh, 18th or 19th century. And North, it's Northern largely India. gold, is the, it, the metal? Yes. Wow. Um, so when it came time to mounting it, you know, for the unfamiliar eye, it just looks like a bunch of chains and jewels yeah. without any shape. So the best way to show how it would be in life, you know, moving and on a hand, shiny, jingling, um, would be to put it in the form that it would be in on the body. Right, so right. it's at a diagonal, which I think, again, is sort of suggesting movement, more dynamic. Um, and the mount, in this case, the goal is, again, to disappear and not get in the way. Um, and also to support. And support because everything. Because this is gold, it right. could fall under its own weight. Right, right. Provide the shape it needs and lack, you know, keep it from moving as well. So. And I'm starting, to, I'm starting to glean the structure. I'm getting the eyes to yeah, be able to see can. this. You've got structure everywhere mm -hmm. here. And it's a little darker than the gold because I guess in, in the shadow in the back, there's points where you don't really want to outshine the gold. Oh, for guess, fair, you know? yeah. Do you gold plate your mounts? We do. Okay. Um, and then a layer of lacquer to protect them over it, or a couple layers. Right, right. And with something like this, where you've got these two carefully bent semicircles inside of each of these mm -hmm. finger holes, there's a lot of iteration in that, I would imagine. Yeah, it's. I mean, you're constantly taking things out reshaping them the best possible before you braise them together. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's a lot of different parts um, in, and, to line up. And given the basic color here, this pink, is this sort of yeah. one of your standard palettes you work with? This is sort of, in the galleries, it's sort of to suggest sandstone, okay. I think, for the area. Um, I know another piece in this case is from Jaipur, which is a the entire city has a similar color, but I don't think it's related to that. I think it's more sandstone. And so you've matched that color on the up right here, mm -hmm. but you abandon that color once we get to the right. back. Once you the... hit a contour that's competing with the piece, you want to disappear. And, and so I more. imagine there are sometimes careful decisions even about where the pink, where, where oh, that yeah. color ends. Yeah, that's true. And ironically, I was at a museum very recently where they had a glass, a similar object with a glass hand or a plexiglass, oh. you know, mannequin hand. Yeah. And I thought, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's up in Boston, it's a much easier um, I, idea. It also looks to me like you're using some very fine brass or gold wire to hold this piece onto the mount. Do I see I, like a little tiny bit of Oh, there. yes, I, it's been a while. I, oh, no, no that's no, just actually part of the, oh, I was yeah. Tracked. Yeah, there's little, that's just part of its construction. Tiny little arms wow. to you know, keep everything in its place. Oh my goodness. And the chain will easily fall if... Oh, you know, so it has to be... just several hit hooks. Gotcha. Yeah, you have to toy with it to get it centered just right. Or it's, after. It's a lovely dynamic mount. I like this better than a glass hand, frankly. No. I'm just saying <laughs> that. Yeah. It's nice when you don't have a glass hand. <laughs> All right, Layla, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good. Um, it looks like we have a watch <laughs> here, but it's there's a lot of complexity going on. Tell me about Pretty, what the object is. Yeah, this was a like 17th century French Renaissance pocket watch that was in a show we had called Hidden Faces. 
Um, so wow. on the front, it's Europa and the bull. And, and it's then, a hand painted. Yeah, it's all enameled gold. Oh my gosh. Um, and then the watch mechanism is uh, gilded brass. Okay. But and uh, yeah, and then there's on the back. Mer oh. Mercury and the Three Graces. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm just like, what kind of brush do they use? Have you I, seen don't, I don't know. I mean, I remember seeing a picture of Van Eyck had like a one hair <laughs> brush, but that's what it looks like they had to have used. Yeah, the amount of, the strength of the optimizers they must have had, I don't understand. Oh my gosh. And, and it like fades into the background, like more and more yeah. verses. <laughs> it doesn't even look dimensional as I see yeah. reflections move across yeah. it. Okay, so then, and you're also, um, there's the movement, oh my yes. god! Yes, so actually the case itself was made before the movement because okay. they tended to care more about the paintings and the cases they would display than the actual movement function. Wow. Um, so the case was painted, uh, I think in 1675 by a French artist mm -hmm. and this was made by a Dutch watchmaker. Okay, so what was the charge from your, your, your team about how to display this? So since this show was called Hidden Faces, and it was all about showing hidden faces in Renaissance work, like um, the back of panel paintings that normally wouldn't be seen. And stuff. Right. So curators wanted to show this floating completely open like this. Oh. Um, that explains so much. I was like, <laughs> the mount looks like it only grabs from the top. I know. it's a, And it was really tricky because this is the heaviest part of the whole object. Sure. Um, so this was kind of one of those where I worked on it for weeks off and on. It had to come back because the... It was just really tricky to figure out the weight distribution. Like when you're playing around with a mount idea, you're not leaving it in that mount. You're just you're no. test fitting and seeing how it settles and then you're yeah. putting it away and thinking for a while. Which is really hard when they want something to literally float because you're like, how do I, <laughs> could someone just make it float for me while I try and figure out how this fits? But uh, you're doing both at once. Which and is, is it like solving, is it like solving a puzzle where once you've done it, the answer is super obvious that you could have seen yeah, it all along? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. And sometimes like, no, I had to struggle through that uh, to get there. <laughs> well, so I see like yeah. three different things going on here. I see a, a felted back that supports, I see these two shoulder supports, and then I see this little upright. Am I right that yes. this upright is holding onto the movement? The This little thing right yeah. here is to keep this back. Ah. Even though the weight wanted to, or gravity wanted to hold it there, it was like so close to the tipping point that if someone should like bump into the case or something, like we had to make sure it wouldn't fall back down. Okay, so then these guys hold the movement, is that right? Yeah, so oh. these slide um, and support this part. Do you want me to show you or should you Yes, that? but I, before you <laughs> okay. do, I have a question because I noticed this is the first time in the painting that you guys do the beautiful painting. I see your blue and white, but I see gold and I'm wondering, do you actually gild the gold? No, we use patinas. Okay. Yeah, so this was just like super, actually I might have honestly just polished the brass. Ah, okay. Um, and then we, uh, use art safe varnishes for them. Um, and I have to say, I can't take credit for the paint job on this one. Jacob did it. Okay. Um, I think I was at a breaking point mentally with this one and I was out and he was like, don't <laughs> worry, I painted it for you. I was like, thank you. Oh, that's really um, lovely. You guys can pick yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were all painters originally and I'm a metals person. So it's like, I'm adapting to learning the painting skills, but they're really good at it. Copy. <laughs> I would love to see this sitting in the Okay. Mouth. You want to try? It's a little tricky, and I hadn't done it in a you while. Want to put my hands underneath. <laughs> I won't drop it, but okay. it might be strange to get it on at the. Okay, so it has to slide on this way, and that has to go there. Oh, there we wow. go. It's a little tilted. <laughs> there we go. So originally, I wanted the supports uh. to be inside yeah and it never worked it would just slide the object too far this way gotcha. so eventually i realized it had to be fully underneath the heaviest part oh my which God. yeah it does seem obvious now but uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> also can you believe these hand cut gears yeah i it's super nuts it was really scary to touch this over and over again i can only imagine <laughs> i also noticed that when you were attempting to mount it the moment you got the mount right, the mount disappeared. It really felt like a magic trick. Perfect. It just like <laughs> blended right in. This piece was actually in a photo for the show that was in the New York Times. And I, I don't remember if it was Warren or Jacob sent me a photo and it's like, no mount. It's just like a floating object. It's like, nice. Perfect. That's got to be awesome. That's the goal, yeah. Do you put that on your desk on a, on a thumb thumbtack just for inspiration? No mount. Uh, what mount? Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
amazing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just incredible. Thank you so much for yeah, showing this thanks. to me.